try to well, we got a complaint that this plant is not turning back on walking in I can hear there's a chiller upstairs that runs the second part of the loop I can hear it operating evaporator flow overdue we are open this is our flow switch chill water pumps running are for the chiller we're looking at See the stem there? It is actually open. So do we show flow right now? Evaporator, no flow. Alright. Let's get the tool bag. We're gonna open up the flow switch and see. This is just a paddle switch in here. It may have just gone bad. This is our overhaul we have going, by the way, in case anybody realized that that chiller tore apart. We are waiting on the motor to come back. Okay, according to that, we have continuity across it. We still show no flow. So that could be an issue. I mean, heck, all these are brand new, though. I'm thinking it was this one down here. I hope we don't have a comm card failure. That's not going to be good. Pull that off. Make sure we're not reading back through the board. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely closed. Make sure all these connectors are pushed in all the way. This doesn't have a schematic in it. I need to pull up the manual and reference the schematic. I'll put this back together. And what we're going to do, so once I confirm which one of these it is here, I'll pull the, uh, the wires. I'm pretty sure it's this card right here fairly confident that uh, 1A7 if memory serves anyway we'll pull the wires off we'll check continuity here at the control module if it checks good at the module that we've got continuity through the flow switch with it hooked up properly then this is going to be our problem one of our brand new cards we just put in here is not talking like it's supposed to and what that will mean is the little uh, solid state uh, switch in here has failed is what that means which I mean, if you think about it we did this entire panel it just you're gonna have occasional failures from the factory and that's all this will be it's just a legitimate failure anyway so here is the schematic slide oil ice condenser water chill water yeah that is a one a seven Chill water is specifically the top two wires on point one and two. Got those two wires pulled off. So we've got continuity there at the board through the through the, the this, that board. The best I can do is I'm going to tr attempt a power cycle. Oh, hang on. One of our little breakers here. Here, let me let me switch over this. So they just, this just caught my eye. Let's try to, woo boy, all right. Well, that's a problem. We have a short somewhere. Well, I guess back to the schematic, because we need to trace and see where all this one goes. I think this is the, this is the output side of the controls transformer. Here is our problem. We're getting a short. I haven't got this cap off yet, but as you can tell, it's significantly dripping. Oh boy, yep. That is our short right there. Yeah, it's just steadily leaking at the stem. I'm hoping if we get the water off of it, we can at least 
kill the short direct short to ground I get a rag wipe that off I'll explain the process of how I got there here in a second it required some uh, in-depth finagling anyway let's get some rags where were they at right here I just need to get this thing back online. That is the focus right now. We can fix what we need to fix later. I just got to get it online. Because they got a bunch of city offices in this building. And uh, they don't take kindly to their space getting hot. Uh, I think that'll be enough. Come back over here. See if we see short to ground now. See, it should be this one. Yep. Okay. Go right there. Okay, we still have a short. What we're going to do as a temporary, this switch is just shorting internally. And actually, I got to looking closer. One of these wires was direct shorting out, and it actually had burnt. Anyway, that'll take care of our short. So basically, the way this went <laughs> is... Your main power legs come in from the transformer feed through this 120 breaker uh, into this this uh, 1x5 terminal block. Okay, so terminal four and terminal eight are those connectors. Now, one of the things I did was I started checking everything across ground and to make sure that you know it all looked okay. Well, sure enough, uh, one of the things you have to do is you gotta pull these ground uh, connections because you'll see everything to ground through the common side on these. So if you pull these off, you, when you see a ground, it's a true ground. These aren't actually interfering. So take these off. Uh, then I started seeing an actual direct short to ground. Well, I started tracing the uh, oil heaters and was going through the starter auxiliaries. And I just, I kept getting a hit back to ground to the main block here and ended up tracing it back uh, to these main terminals. Now there's normally this jumper in place that's uh, going across all of these to tie, to, to tie power back together to all of them just like so. Well, I want to identify which one of these specific circuits is actually the one shorting. So I pull the jumper out and I start testing each one of these to ground individually. Well, I test circuit seven to ground and it, it shows a direct short. All the rest of them check good. Well, then I pull out the schematic and I start going through the schematic and I see that circuit seven goes through my flow switches. Well, that led me back over here and I tested the chill water flow switch at first because that's just where I started. And I saw, saw a short to ground through the chill water flow switch. So I go over here to the flow switch and I start checking it here and I'm still seeing a short on one of these legs. So testing it back, I go back through the switch and I was testing between the switch and the panel getting ready to condemn one of those wires that shorted the ground. Well, that brought me back to this point here. So these three wires tie together and these are the commons of both the condenser and the, the chill water flow switch. Well, just out of being thorough, um, what I ended up doing was I was uh, verifying, I pulled all the connections apart from each other and I was testing across just the, con the chill water wires and then testing both wires to ground. Well, I lost my short to ground. So then I tested it on the condenser water side and sure enough, the short was back. So then tracing it back over to the condenser water flow switch, that's when I started taking this cover off and you saw all the water come out. I grabbed the camera before I actually took it off because I just knew it was going to be bad. So anyway, 
that's what led me to this point. It's doing due diligence, not being too fast to condemn, always verifying everything. That's the main key thing here. Uh, you know, a big picture diagnosis thing is, you know, don't don't just make a jerk reaction decision because if I would have, my, my, my recommendation would have been, oh, we need to replace this one wire. Well, that wouldn't have fixed anything. We would have still had a problem because that wasn't the problem. Because I spent just a couple of extra minutes and went through the, uh, the, the additional switches, I found the commons where they tied together was also giving me a short to ground. That's, how, that's what led me to the condenser switch. Anyway, I need to get all this put back together, get all this buttoned up. We'll be able to turn this breaker back on and get this machine online and get this building cooling down. Time for the moment of truth. All right. Okay, now that we got that on, come back here to reports, evaporator, flow, and we are up and going. Nice. Just that quick, that's all it needed. And if you're wondering, Yes, this machine is that loud. And that's water looks fine. It'll start staging up and doing this thing. So we'll button everything up. From here, I'll go talk to the customer. They should approve a new flow switch. Uh, it's not that big of an expense. We will have to come back. We'll isolate the condenser water up there. And that'll allow us to uh, pull this flow switch out, drop a new one in. That is a one inch nipple. So we'll just need to make sure that whenever we get the new one to get a one inch size. And it won't take long to do this, the change out. All it is just a set of paddles in there. So not that big a deal. They did approve the repair for today. So I got the new flow switch here. While I was out picking up parts, I was able to get the condenser fan motor for a Antelopack service call I got going. And uh, I'll get that video up as soon as I can. It'll probably be after this chiller repair video. So, uh, But once it is, I'll, uh, I'll add a card here linking to that video. So if y'all want to check it out, you can. But it's a completely separate issue. Whole thing. Antelopack RTU. Anyway. We're gonna get back to the job site and get that part switched out. So it has processed the water down to a uh, set point. So we're doing good there. We'll go ahead, I'll let the customer know we're here. We'll do a shutdown and uh, we'll get this switched out. This won't take, but just a few minutes. One of the things I'm going to point out is it's really wise to use your extra paddles as like a as like a retention backing, so it just helps give this larger paddle a little more rigidity whenever it's trying to flow. So just something to be aware of. I highly recommend. New flow switch is installed. Got the pump back online. Now one of the things you're gonna notice is I didn't take a whole bunch of time trying to worry about bleeding any air or anything out. Uh, the reason for that is above us, there are the towers, they are open loop. So all the air is gonna get pushed up there. As soon as I turn the pump back on, 
It's, it's going to push in through the incoming back out and all the air is going to get forced up into the tower and all the tower makeup is done at the tower for the condenser water. So it wasn't super critical. If this was a closed loop system, I would have had to have been way more uh, conscious about how I, I got that air back out of the loop and then all the air bleeders and such actually did their job. Anyway, I've got the the control breaker back on. We have flow back on the uh, condenser water. So we look good. All that squared away, all of our wiring is still good. I didn't change anything in there. We're gonna put this back in auto. Let it start back up. And we'll clean up and get out of here. It's going through a start circuit now. We're gonna call this good. I'll clean up, get all my stuff together. We'll get the heck out of here. I'm calling this one done. I've got a medical center I've got to run to from here before I go do that other uh, IntelliPak call that I had that motor for. So, anyway, guys, MTT, make time for your family. Take care of your kids. Take care of your spouse. You know, this is what we hear. It's what we do. What we do, guys. So, uh, they always come first. And hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in helping out the channel or you want to support it, I haven't opened up memberships yet. But I do have, you know, a, a Venmo and uh, a, a, what do they call it, Zelle or Zelly uh, account. So you're more welcome to, you know, donate anything you feel like there. If, if anything at all helps, just take care of the channel. A lot of time goes into putting all this stuff together for you guys. But I do it because I want y'all to see what's here. You know, this is. I want this to encourage you to want to come do this yourself because there's not enough of me left right now. There's just way too few of us, you know, chiller, senior, advanced guys in the field, and we're way too spread thin. So I need more of you guys to step up and become a part of what we're doing. Find, find an avenue somewhere to get involved, to get the training. Find the right company. I don't care how you do it. Just, just get there because we, we really, really need you in the trade right now. There's just I'll check out with that. Appreciate it, guys. There will be more updates on this overhaul coming soon. We're within a week or two of getting back on that project. So look forward to it.